Nestled in the Berkshires is the town of Salisbury, Connecticut, a quintessential American town which is home to 3,000 and has a rich history steeped in the American Revolution. History defines the culture of the town as many prominent businesses and families have been established over generations. The Holly family, a well-known name around town, ran a successful pocket knife business. They were renowned abolitionists and are heavily featured in the town's history. Their house and factory still stand today for all to see. There's a reoccurring theme in Salisbury as well as other towns across America where the histories, buildings, and street signs only represent certain historical figures. The town library is named after the Scoville family. The Hotchkiss School is named after the famed weapons manufacturer. In Salisbury, we see this occur without mention of a whole demographic that lived and died to contribute to this town, African Americans. To learn more about this history, we turn to the coast. Dennis Colleton, I'm um, a retired school teacher and the uh, founder and now the executive director of the Witness Stones Project. The Witness Stones Project works to rewrite the history and restore the humanity to enslaved individuals who lived and worked in our communities. Based on the German Stoppelstein, the Witness Stones Project commemorates those that have been erased by a whitewashed history. While doing independent research, Mr. Colton, a Connecticut native and history teacher, found himself uncovering consequential truths. And but if you look at a book, you know, a, you know, 500 page book of the history of Guilford, it maybe mentions, you know, a, at most a page about a couple of enslaved people. It's really like as if they either didn't exist or they weren't an, an important part of the economy. If the history of these communities and community members has been erased, how can we work to bring them back into the narrative? This is Catherine Overton. She's an amateur genealogist and a member of the Caesar family, a free black family that lived in Salisbury and the neighboring town of Sharon for a few centuries. For the last couple of years, she has been keen on finding her past. It was her upbringing during the civil rights era that first made her think about her family's history. This was around the time of the early 60s, the mid 60s when the civil rights movement was going on. So. I was seeing a lot of things going on on television, you know, the, the marches and the protests, and I didn't understand, like, what, why is all this happening? So I decided that I needed to learn more about history on my own and also try to see what I could find out about my family, what they had gone through. Had they endured any of these um, things that I hear people talking about, lynchings and, you know, executions and terrible things that were going on? While she found nothing of that nature, she found out that it was hard to find any information at all. We oftentimes see something more like an erasure where it's erased and then you wouldn't know today that anyone ever, anyone of color ever lived in that part of your community, even though what you're finding out with the Caesar family that there were, you know, there were, there were families, there were communities, there were sometimes even churches that are now, um, are, are now extinct uh, in many of our communities. I would say it was buried and ignored. The records that I looked at going back to the 1800s and early 1900s were very, very racist. Um, even the terminology was. So not only was the information hard to find, but it was often tainted with racist themes or just pure ignorance. It's like going to the library and finding out that one of the sections in the library is missing. You know, you don't, you don't have all of the, the information you need. You may be able to find some things, but you're never going to have the whole story. Racism is, a, is it runs deep. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it, it makes, it causes a lot of things to be forgotten about or not spoken about or misrepresented. Salisbury has little knowledge of the black people that lived in this town. Even the historical society has limited knowledge. However, that is not a complaint against the town of today, but rather the country of the past that did not want them remembered, something that Miss Overton is trying to rewrite through her journey. Mostly because the record keeping, the compilation of records, the dissemination of records, and um, how well they're kept were done by people who weren't necessarily interested in, you know, taking 
our history into consideration. And in a lot of cases, a lot of information was left out. However, despite the challenges and with a lot of digging, Miss Overton was able to find valuable information, some of which got her very excited. Well, there, there were several what I call aha moments. Um, but I guess one of the most emotional ones was when I came across records, actual name of my Revolutionary War ancestor in the official records of the Connecticut State Archives. Yeah, I, had, I found his attendance records. I found where he was located. That was very exciting because I never thought I'd ever see that much information on somebody that far, you know, back. The, the lady at the National Archives actually told me I had more. She said, your jacket has more information in it than we've seen in a long time for an African-American. So I was very happy. Miss Overton's mother and grandmother were the last two members of the family to call the Salisbury Sharon area home, but it was still a huge part of their identity. And she was standing outside of her apartment building with her bags packed, saying that she wanted to leave, get the train to go back to Sharon to visit her mother. This was when she was in her probably 80s, uh, just before my mother moved her to Washington, D.C. They worshiped there. The newspaper articles that I found online, especially in the Lakeville uh, Journal, you know, talk about their school life, talk about some of the parties they attended. Um, so it's, it's like reading Facebook. It's like reading Facebook, only I'm going back in time and I'm finding more information about them, just like you would now if you, you know, went on Facebook and looked at somebody's profile. It is clear that Salisbury and Sharon are not just places on a map, but rather locations where people built their lives. Part of her journey is proving that people of color are just as ingrained in this town's history as any other. Without black history, there is no American history. We built this country physically. Um, and, if you, and if you take the, the narrative out of American history, you don't have, you don't have the, the whole story. You're missing so much information. That is why this class is so important. Miss Overton has done amazing work, but her vision of the future does not just involve her. She sees a wave of young people taking a step back and searching for discrepancies in history, then having the knowledge and know-how to rectify what the textbooks got wrong. In this class, we are trying to uncover the local black and indigenous lives that have been buried or ignored. The information is out there, however, a racially biased world has kept those stories suppressed. By bringing people like the Caesars into the limelight, we can help to complete this town's history, which for years has been unfinished. The Caesars owned land here, worked here, fought for this country, and died here. That is a story worth being told. But the journey does not end here. Black and indigenous people still have yet to have had their story told in a country that for hundreds of years has refused to acknowledge them, instead actively sweeping them under the rug. So while this is a history class, it is more indicative of a larger message, that young people can help to remember forgotten citizens and to strive towards change and a better, more tolerant, and more educated America. During her research, Miss Overton hypothesized that her great-great-grandfather George Caesar's 1850 property was now part of the Appalachian Trail. So, one fall Sunday, we decided to trek up to the campsite to see if we could prove her theory. It was unbelievable to see, to actually see the actual land and the remnants of the house, the, the, the cellar, the, the stones are still there. The stones that were placed by possibly George Caesar's hands. The fact that they're getting involved in it hands-on means it's gonna live with them.
just like it lives with me. Will you continue to research and tell stories to your kids and grandkids? Um, and why do you think this is important? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Will I? <laughs> They'll be telling me to please stop. <laughs> I do plan to continue because I don't ever feel like I've finished. I may have completed a certain segment uh, or a certain generation research, but there's still more out there. It is important to know that African-American families have been here for hundreds of years. Black lives matter, black history matters, local black history matters. Up until now, black people have been invisible citizens. They get left out of our histories. As Americans, we all should know our history.